I had been helping lead companies for a number of years, and they all had the vision missions, the core values, a lot of wonky gobbledygook stuff that sounded really great, but they couldn't answer this simple question, where are you headed? So I was forced to come up with a strategic process that did. And as one entrepreneur who used the process described it, it's strategy without all the bullshit. Welcome to the Get Business Savvy Podcast. I'm George Black, and this is AJ Bishop. As you're saying all of that, George, you're just reminding me of everything I was learning while I was in school, all that wonky gobbledygook. Like I took a strategic management course that's supposed to be a capstone course, you know, to kind of be the icing on the cake of your education and make sure all the students really understand strategy. And it was just all of that wonky stuff straight out of a textbook, all the tests and everything from the textbook. And it was just words like SWOT analysis and blue ocean strategies and differentiation and cost (laughs) leadership strategies. And, you know, they had all these different terms for all these different strategic things you can do. And they boiled it down to a textbook that made it seem like, oh, if you just read this, then you know what strategy is. And I know, as we've discussed on this podcast, that's not really how strategy ends up playing out in the real world. It's not just you can put your strategy into one of these textbook definitions and boom, um, it's going to work or not work based on your business. It's not, they always, it was always very surface level to be or shallow. You may not know this, AJ, but my book has been used in a strategic management capstone class at another university. And it was led by Stephen Takash, who wrote the foreword to my book. And I would have definitely enjoyed taking that class more just from reading your book. I already know the process is much more straightforward and um, I would say fluid based on the situation, more based in real life scenarios rather than just a textbook trying to summarize all of what business has been or all of what business is doing now, which is kind of what my strategic management course was, I felt like. And just kind of from your position, I'm, I'm seeing it more in like, you know, just by basing the class off of it. But how would you actually describe the difference between your strategic process versus all of the the textbook strategic processes that are out there? Your question, AJ, is triggering some memories. I remember a few years ago, I was introduced to a gentleman who had led strategy at a major multi-billion dollar grocery chain. And he had heard about my book and strategic process and things like that. And so we sit down for lunch and I had never met him. Okay. And out of the blue, I mean, he starts the conversation with, so George, what makes your strategic process different from all the rest of them out there? And there are a lot of them out there. Right. And I was like, so taken aback. And I go, the first things out of my mouth was, well, it's strategy without all the bullshit. (laughs) <laughs> and, then, and then I sat with that for a second. I go, no, no, wait, wait. but here's the real difference in my process from every other process out there. It is strategy sourced in your passions. Mm-hmm. And that led to a, an amazing conversation. He would read the book. He's written uh, blurps about it and things like that. And we've become good friends. So it was great. And I, that if you looked in that textbook I was using for my class, you didn't find the word passion anywhere in there. And they treated strategy as if it was just the business exists and it's pursuing a strategy and it doesn't right. matter at all what the leadership wants or the people actually doing it or starting the business. Their identity it doesn't have anything to do with it. It's just the business has a strategy. That was how they taught it. But it's very clear from our conversations that the entrepreneur and the leader is very integral in what the business is going to be and how the strategy is going to be successful. And all that's rooted in your passions, but it's not easy to turn your passions into a successful and profitable business. So I'm wondering, how did you develop a process around turning passions into a successful business? So in my book, the whole first part is about focusing on your passions and that leads to envisioning what it's going to become. See, here's the little secret, and it's what 
you, you do what you love, okay? And that's what passions are. These are things you love. And what we want to be able to do is these are passions that you love to do that are monetizable. Not every passion we have, we can make a living at, okay? So, so there is some clarification that has to go on there. The idea is if I'm doing what I love, when the hard times hit, then I can get through them because I'm loving what I'm doing. I'm not exhausted. I'm not burning out. So kind of like the picture in your book that Mr. A drew? You're exactly right. It is that picture. So let me just set this up. The book is letters, all right? So there's a young entrepreneur named Max North, and he's writing this sage, Mr. A, who is this entrepreneur, successful tycoon guy. And it's all set in the 1940s, and there's a lot to it. So Mr. A has sent Max a letter with what he calls his prehistoric art. And that's the picture AJ is referring to. And we'll put it up on YouTube so you can see it. And if you're listening on the audio, I'll just describe it. Okay. And so on the right, upper right of the picture, there's these hills way off in the distance and over it's called vision. All right. So let me tie this together. It's coming out of your passions. What do you envision? This I have found is like the hardest thing to get clear about. And as you get something clear about, here's what I envision. This is 30 years from now. It's long-term, 20, 30, 40 years. Then you start to have direction. What I like about the art, and even though it is a kind of prehistoric with the stick figure and you know limited details for Mr. A, uh, but he's not an artist, he's an entrepreneur. You can still tell where he's describing the vision in the picture it's these it's these rolling hills. And as you read the letter, you know that in those hills, Mr. A has a, a bright imagination for what the vision of his company looks like. And that's the the basis for what your strategy looks like is how do we get there? Where a lot of I feel like strategic management concepts or a lot of the the wonkiness of what strategy has become is a lot of it's not based in where are we going and what does it clearly look like when we get there. Right. Yes, AJ, direction is absolutely key. And remember, I'm answering, I'm trying to come up with a process that will answer the simple question, where are you headed? Now, I'm an immensely practical person, okay? And I, and so the wonky, gobbledygook, pie in the sky, blah, blah, blah stuff doesn't work for me, okay? I want to go from, all right, here's what I envision, and I want to bring it down to what do I do next? Okay. So that's what this process does in one page. It's magical. It's called the next level navigator because what we're really trying to do is establish what our next level is. So in the picture, there's kind of a hill up close where, as AJ said, there's this prehistoric looking little stick figure guy <laughs> and the hill goes down and and sort sort of toward the bottom of the hill it's over the hill okay that's the point is it's marked next level and here's the thing about a next level it is something you can know but you cannot see how to get there and i'll just shortcut this if you can see how to get there those are called that's the next step Okay. And so multiple next steps, which is in the picture, the next step is at the top of the hill, the little stick figure, the little dotted eyes can see the <laughs> top of the hill and next where it says next steps. So multiple next steps take you to your next level. Okay. And multiple, many next levels over years can take you to what you envision. As you move closer and closer to what you envision, what you envision gets clearer. So here's the beauty of this tool is you're going to have pivots, especially if you're a startup. I think you're going to have two to three pivots in the first three years, more than likely. That's what I've kind of discovered. And here's, here's how the tool works. So you have next step strategies. Those are six to 12 months and next levels are three to five years. Probably if you're a startup, three years is good enough. And you could have a pivot every single year but you're, you're pivoting using strategies. So this is a live dynamic tool, but you once you've set what you envision, that's, that's going to modify a little bit, but not a lot. Usually it modifies at the times you achieve next levels. So that's the process in a nutshell. As you're describing these next levels, you're saying three to five years. And I agree as, right. a, as an entrepreneur, especially as a startup, 
just making it to year three is a is a very big accomplishment and definitely should be its own level in its own right, just being able to make it to year three. But if you're somebody who's getting into a business and you're wanting to run this for 10, 20, 30 years for decade for multiple right. decades, how do you even begin to process the amount of next levels that are ahead of you? The 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 number of three to five year periods that are ahead of you, how do you tie all those together to make sure that the, the process is still working towards that ultimate vision? So you don't. That's the simple, the simple <laughs> answer is is all those levels you don't worry about because they, you don't know what they are. You can't know what they are, but you can know what the next level is. And so if you're a startup, your first, and we've talked about this last week, your first level is oftentimes just get it established, you know, launch the company, get it done, get it, get a foothold, foundations, those sort of things. But as you move along next level to next level, and oftentimes I've discovered this, you begin, like, let's say you've got a three-year next level, Okay. Oftentimes, when you get to about year three, you're kind of moving into the final year of the next level, you start to get a really good idea. You know what's going to be the next level because next levels are transformative. So they kind of reveal themselves over time. Once you make it to that next level, now you have a complete, completely different vantage point at which you're looking out at the future. And from there, you can kind of tell what that, that next level is going to be. That's exactly right. And here's why you have a better vantage point, as you just said, is because you've been doing the business now at and, and headed to that next level and you've encountered obstacles and obstacles are a big part of figuring out the strategies for the process. And so as you figure those things out, you figure out what works and doesn't work. And uh, what the market wants and doesn't want. You learn things about the competition. So there's a whole lot of data coming in because you're out there. It's live fire training. And and so you go, oh, we thought that next level was going to be the end all to everything. But as it turns out, once we got to that, we realized, oh, you know what? There's a better next level than we could have ever imagined. Now we see where to go. And as you're discovering those next levels, the next level is going to kind of take you in a different direction. How do you know if that next level is in line with your vision? Or are you kind of expecting your vision to change over time? Because as you overcome those obstacles, you learn more about yourself as an entrepreneur and your ultimate vision and passions kind of change over time. And so you want them to change with the next levels. What you just said there, AJ, is why you have to write a really good envisioning sentence or statement. And we have a whole process for that. And because that's the direction you're headed and you don't know all the things that you're going to encounter on the way to that direction. A great example is a company I help lead at called Rackspace. When we started doing their Next Level Navigator, they were at about $100 million in sales. And so I met with the CEO, the vice president of strategy, those two guys. And I said, where are you guys headed? They couldn't answer the question. Guys, let me tell you something. They had every strategic consultant you can imagine. Okay. <laughs> I mean, these were not a, this was not a company without resource. But they could, it was exactly why I made the next level navigator. They couldn't answer the question. We had meeting after meeting. This went on for several weeks. And finally, and I, they, they would explain to me, well, George, technology is always changing. You can't know, blah, blah. And I've talked about this in previous podcasts because it's so illustrative of why having a direction is so important. And I'll never forget the CEO just slams his pencil down at one point on the table and goes, I don't know, George, to be the number one in managed hosting. <laughs> and I couldn't come up with their next level, but I know a next level when I hear one and it's got that ring to it. And I was like, ta-da, you know, we've got a next level here, guys. I can take it from here. And it's impressive that your process can work even for a company that's already operating at a hundred million dollar scale, you can come in the middle of it and help them change their textbook strategic thinking right. to a new process that helped them go beyond where the textbook could have ever taken them. 
And you have a quote in your book just from the, the front page from the president or the former president of Rackspace here, where he says that your next level navigator process brought order to disarray and can help any organization focus its effort on the key drivers of success. Um, and that's from the former president of Rackspace, which basically describes exactly what you just said. You brought order to the disarray and you gave them a, a strategic process to look at the key drivers of success. Right. That, so that's the, at the time, he was the vice president of strategy. He also did uh, merger and acquisitions and things like that. That's working with them on the corporate level, but they actually brought me in, and I don't really talk about this too much, but they brought me in to straighten out their newly formed enterprise division. It was doing a few million in sales. And they said, George, they've got some strategies that we'd like you to look at and kind of, they just need a little help organizing it. I thought, sure. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. That's a great place to start. Because I knew I had the navigator. And I thought, well, you know, but if they've already got good strategic processes, then I don't probably need to use the navigator. So <laughs> this is hilarious. I go to the first meeting. And so they bring the key leaders. And there was like six or seven of them. And they had a the 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 head of the division, vice president person, and then like like directors. Mm -hmm. And we were all around a big, I'll never forget it, a big conference table and it was covered in papers and some of them were in you know laminated and in plastic sleeves and all this stuff and they had binders of stuff and oh they so i come in and they go you know met them all and they're like okay we've got all of our strategy here on the table <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> what <laughs> it's this pile of papers everywhere and i'm like well like well, so what's the key focus here? What's the key strategy? And my head was hurting. I mean, and <laughs> and nobody right. knew what they were talking about. They go, well, hey, and they're all shuffling papers and they go, where's that binder about the such and such and stuff? And they had all these different consultants come in and all this stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is not a little organizing. This is a, and I go, I literally just said, okay, I tell you what, we're going to start all over. <laughs> and we did the next level navigator and we brought ever all of that into one page and one of the directors this was hilarious so we had our strategy so we had our next set we got to our next step strategies we had those and he goes so these are the things i'm working on for the next six months i go yes right i look at the i look at the vp right and she's kind of like yeah, cringing. Yes. He goes, so that means my strategies aren't going to change every week. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, that means your strategies aren't going to change every week. We're going to laminate this. Okay. <laughs> They're not going to change until you accomplish them. <laughs> <laughs> and you can't believe, and honestly, they were doing tens of millions of sales and revenue very, very quickly hit over a hundred million really fast. It was a bonanza. Everyone knew this division needed to happen, but they just couldn't get it launched. When you launch it on the right foot, it just blew up. It was incredible. Again, another story that's backed up right at the front of your book with a quote from Graham Weston, um, who was the chairman of Rackspace. And he said that you helped leaders in a new business unit created strategy for success and helped roll out key financial metrics, which I'm assuming he's talking right. about that business unit. And then he said, after that success, George led all our corporate offsite meetings for many years using his next level navigator process. And so they <laughs> saw a success from that one unit. And then you took you to the whole corporation and used you for multiple years beyond that so that they could make sure they were hitting their next levels. Right. And that's another funny story because so we get, we get, we establish like, okay, where are you headed? So that conversation. And then one day they had this meeting with me and it was with Graham and the CEO and the vice president, these guys, the three, so we had three guys in the room and they were like bringing up the whole idea of leading their off sites. And they said, so would you lead a, would you lead us in the navigator in an offsite? And I said, well, yeah. And they said, so you're saying, yes, you'll do it. And I go, uh, yeah, I think I am. <laughs> go, so you're saying you will lead this year's offsite. <laughs> I'm like, I feel like I'm walking into a trap. <laughs> 
Well, it turned out everyone the previous year, they hadn't ever had a successful offsite to Got put it. together the annual strategy. And the previous year's offsite, they had ended up at the bar like at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the, the, the thing is, and so what I discovered was, so it was a huge challenge. And we would, and it was a global company, and we did this for a number of years. But we, so the first year was like 20 or 30 people. And then after that, it was like 70 something people, and it was like three days. And I figured out how to work all these teams, and these people would fly in from the UK and Europe and stuff. And it was absolutely fabulous. And I've got to tell you, the navigator work, we knew the core direction, but in developing like the next step strategies, we knew the next level. The feedback, the involvement, and it aligned the team. Like we talked about in last week's episode, getting everyone pulling in the same direction. It was incredible. It's a great example of how, yes, it absolutely works at every level. In that year four, we were running at $500 million in revenue on trajectory to go public. And we, we basically hit all of our key markers in year four. And that is incredible to hear the the story and some of the the inside out of how this process worked for such a large corporation. But I don't want to sound too much like the textbooks from my classes where we focus always on the big corporations and what they were doing. I know a lot of our audience here, like myself, we're not running big corporations. We're running very little companies that we hope one day can be one of those big corporations that people talk about and people study. So does this process even work for someone in a startup space? I I, I asked that question knowing the answer because I read the book, but um, just well, to- right. Yeah. So so what AJ is referring to is the book is a startup. Max is a startup. And so his first next level navigator is his next level is his first level because he's a startup. Here's the cool thing about the, the tool that I've discovered is it scales. I wasn't actually, it was actually built around smaller companies, say under 50 million or 10 or zero or (laughs) solopreneurs or entrepreneurs that had a small team. 100 million, I'm like, I don't know. What I discovered, it works at any level. And so a great example was truck and tomato. So I, so, and, and honestly, (laughs) Sean's quote is in the book. Why don't, since you've got the book there, read Sean's quote. He said, the next level navigator is strategy without all the BS. Right. So he went to the, the executive MBA program. He had been in a huge uh, multi-million dollar, huge nonprofit but it was run like a corporation. And so he had been exposed to all kinds of strategic concepts and all this stuff. And, and he had an entrepreneurial itch. And when he launched, he was using the navigator and that's the source of the quote and, and the the theme of this conversation. Well, he started at $0 and he, within three years, was doing a million dollars in gross revenue. It's a fascinating story. We talked about it in a very early podcast, but the gist of it is this. He had this idea of selling organic vegetables, and then he would expand to meats and cheeses and other things out of a trailer and go to business parks and corporations and get, you know, so you could do your shopping while at work kind of a thing and get great food quality and all that kind of thing. It took three pivots in the first two or three years to get him to realize, hey, that was a great concept, but it didn't work out the way he thought. And so as he kept iterating with the pivots, he kept updating his navigator and end up ended up in a rhythm where it really worked. It, it didn't and that and he ended up selling the trailer. <laughs> so the name stayed truck and tomato, but it it the trailer got sold. <laughs> Okay. So, so it works for very small companies to very large companies that are on the verge of going public. Does your process work for every industry? You know, that's an interesting question. So I've actually worked either in leading companies or in guiding entrepreneurs in like over 25 industries. And I'm talking big categories there. 
and it works every single time. And I think the reason for that is because it's not based in an industry. What it's based in is it's based in the entrepreneur leaders of that company and their passions and what they want. Like at Rackspace, they there was a true passion in the top leadership. They wanted to be like a great service company. They had fanatical support. So it was their passions. So you could build on that. So that's why I think it works. It's not based on, oh, I, here's what the construction industry does and here's what manufacturing does and and here's what oral surgery does. I mean, these are all industries I've worked in. It also works in pitching contests. And I, I know of two people who have won contests uh, using the tool and won $25,000 each. And then others have come placed very, very high and won lesser amounts of money. So this tool is, it's, it works across all kinds of situations. Yeah. And we've done episodes on how my pitch could have been even better had I <laughs> based it in your process. And so I'm just. Well, we had just met. I mean, it was. Yeah, early. It was exactly. <laughs> there wasn't enough time to get going. Um, we had a podcast to start. You've just described a lot of how your process works and the history behind it. And now what I'm really wondering is, how do I get started with your process? So there's a couple of easy ways to start using the Next Level Navigator process. One is my book, The Next Level Entrepreneur. It's on Amazon. And there's links down in the description to get you there. Also, we've got an e-course, the Next Level Navigator e-course, which for this month, we're offering at a fantastic discount. I would really encourage you to check that out. And you can use that with the book. And there's 34 videos. You'll end up with a fantastic navigator and it's going to launch you to your next level. Plus all this month, we've been talking about all different kinds of elements of the next level navigator. And I think you'll particularly enjoy last week's episode where we get into the story behind it. And so check that episode out. And until next time, may you live truly free.